It's Wednesday, April 26th out here at the West End Gun Club. I here this morning to do a run through of the NRL 22 May 2023 Courts of Fire, which is the start of the new NRL 22 season. For those of you unaware, May is an actual Courts of Fire. Prior years, NRL 22 had May as a kind of an empty month because that's when the national championships were. But they've changed it all up this season, so May is now the start of the new season. So definitely check out the new rule book that's out. As far as kind of how it affects people, no serious changes. However, they will have a new classification type of system, kind of like the NRA disciplines where you have, what is it? Marksman, sharpshooter, expert, master, high master. They're gonna have something a little bit similar. And, uh, but definitely read up the rule book, the new rules to get an idea of how that's all gonna work out. And in any case, before I do an actual uh, course of our run through, I did shoot a new scope or I test, tested a new scope and zeroed it all in. I was gonna do it last Sunday after the match, but I was just so tired of running the match, turning in all my paperwork and everything and handling all the logistics that I said, you know what, I'm just tired, I'm gonna go home. But I did decide to do that this morning. The new scope that I am zeroing this morning is the Bushnell Match Pro ED. This is the new hotness right now in terms of precision rifle, budget precision rifle. I have it on my 1022 because after I got my Voodoo 360, I needed to take back the Z Comp uh, 527, put it on my Voodoo 360, and the 1022 has no scope. These came into stock for a very short time uh, a few weeks ago at the Bushnell website, so I picked one up. This is a, what is this? This is a 5 to 30. So this is a 5 to 30. They call it ED glass, uh, extra low dispersion. And everyone is raving about it ever since they dropped the first batch back in December. So I decided to get one, you know, it's very low risk. It's $700 for one of these. The, this is an upgrade or, you know, kind of a, a, a like a little step up from their, their original Match Pro which is a $400 scope, and now it's down to $350 if you want non-illuminated. I believe that one's a 6 to 24 and a 30 tube. This one is a 5 to 30 in a 34 millimeter tube. So I had to actually get new rings because I don't have any spare rings for 34s. All I have are spare 30s. So I got these weed air rings from MK Machining. But uh, so far, I mean, I got it zeroed. I need to zero stop at home because I didn't bring the manual with me, and I was reading it. I, I skimmed through it a little bit when I received the scope. And there's a funky way they do is the zero stop on this thing. I think I have to remove the cap and reverse it and do something. I don't know. But I have it zeroed right now and I'll just have to take notes on how I have it set up and I'll take care of it at home. But zero to 50 yards. My initial impression though is that the turrets are a little spongy, especially the, the windage turret. So I, I equate the windage turret to, sorry, let me remember right here at th right 3.4. Yeah, it, well, it's not too spongy, but it's not very, I don't know. It's hard to describe clicks on these turrets, but it doesn't feel very crisp as you would want it to be on a high tier scope. Granted, this is not a high tier scope. It's only a $700 scope. But right now, my initial impressions are the turrets, eh, they're okay. I mean, if you if you run higher tier scopes, you're going to feel these turrets. You're going to be underwhelmed. I do like the focus, focus knob tension. It's not like a vortex, which is insanely hard to turn. Same with the parallax knob, it's very smooth. So I do like that and they throw, a th they include a throw lever on there for it. My initial impressions though, as far as clarity, not that great, to be honest. I was looking through it and definitely at 30 it suffers and I think there's a lot of um, dimming in the scope at 30. You have to dial it down to maybe like around 24 and it, it, it looks a little better. I am shooting in a shaded area right there. My target's in a shaded area. But initial impressions, it's it's okay. I mean, I, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, this is great, better than the Viper PSD Gen 2, which that's not really much to shoot for. But I think it, just initial impressions right now, I think it's about, it's on par for sure, if not better. But it'll, I'll have to run it, you know, a little bit more to get an idea of how the well the scope is or how nice the scope is. And I got to take it up to the upper range. It's kind of look at targets at 200 and 300 to get a feel for how the glass is. But, I mean, just want to show this off real quick before we go ahead and start the run-through of the May 2023 NRL-22 Course of Fire. Just a little warning beforehand, I'm going to be changing up my presentation of the Course of Fire run-through a little bit. With the start of the new season, I figure I should change it up somewhat and see how it goes. 
And I'm going to talk a little bit more in detail about, you know, my thoughts at the end of the range vlog. But let's go ahead and get to it. The shoots and ladder stage is relatively simple in my opinion. You're basically gonna shoot one shot on two targets, the two inch at 50 and the three inch at 75, near to far, every rung. You're gonna work from the bottom rung up and uh, all the way to the fifth one. If you can't shoot the fifth one, you have to step back down to the third one because you'll, you'll fire four, then three instead of four, then five. I made the mistake on that run where I went up to five, realized I couldn't shoot it because I'm short, so I can't. I can't shoot the fifth. I went to the fourth, back to the fourth, and I realized, no, I have to shoot third, so I had to eject uh, around. And he saw a little mishap there when I was ejecting and closing the bolt and try to, it looked like I was jamming. I had a round in the chamber, it didn't eject. So I still have a pretty tight chamber, so if you try to eject a loaded round, it ain't gonna come out. So you kinda have to fire it off. So open bolt, basically I just realized, open bolt, move, and then put a new mat, or Close the bolt and put a new mag in when I switch uh, positions correctly so I wouldn't stage DQ. In either case, uh, no real problems here. We, even with that huge mishap there of going to the fifth round, uh, fifth rung, going back to fourth and realizing I need to go to third and then all those magazine and chamber issues, I still finished with 116 elapsed. So you can get your shots off pretty quickly here. Uh, it's all about stable position. Uh, not, nothing, really, nothing really else to say here. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward stage, just a 10 shot stage. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next, uh, stage in the course of fire. Before we jump off to the next stage for all the new shooters seeing this run through and who are looking to shoot the main course of fire, the equipment I use for this specific stage is just one bag. I'm using a flat bag. It's called the D bag by Coltac and it's attached to my Arca rail by way of an Area 419 rail changer attachment. But for the latter stage, highly recommend using a flat bag because if you try to use a game changer bag, which is all the way on the side of the range, depending on how your gun is, it may not fit. Like you'll have problems trying to fit it in the rung. So don't use a huge bag. I, I think a flat bag is actually ideal for the latter stages because it'll, it'll allow you easier maneuverability when you're jump, going into the rungs. So flat bag, usually better.
That stage was called Seesaw the Horse, basically 10 round stage. We only had two targets, a two and a half and a three inch on a double hanger at 82 yards. Pretty straightforward, you're gonna, sh you're gonna shoot two prone, large to small, on the left side of the sawhorse, two at the top of the sawhorse, large, small, two on the prone at the right side of the sawhorse, you know, large, small, the back to the top of the sawhorse, and then back down the prone. So two, 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 and two. Just simple movements here. Not much else to say here. Pretty straightforward. I ran it with one bag just to show how it would be run with one bag. Basically use my Armageddon gear medium bag, the Game Changer medium for my rear support, and then top of the sawhorse and rear support again and repeat. I probably would have just used my flat bag. Ideally, you know, on match day, I'll probably just run my Coltac D bag. I'll just keep this on the gun and then just leave the bag as rear support. Um, that might be one way to go just to simplify my, my movements, I guess, but it's easily done with one bag. And I, I finished 101 elapsed. So plenty of time on the clock, no real rush here. And it's prone and you got pretty big targets 82 yards three and a two and a half inch so uh no biggies here should be a pretty pretty simple stage a quick new shooter tip for the sawhorse or similar barricades of this height where you're going to kneel down use your sh if you're if you're a right-handed shooter bring up your right knee if you're left-handed shooter bring up your left knee if you can like if it allows you to rest your elbow your shooting elbow on your knee to get a more stable position this is going to be better assuming your range and the target area facilitates this. Sometimes it might be too low and you're too short and you can't get it up like, you know, you can't get that, that support. You can fill it in with a bag, um, put a bag here and fill in that spot. That's one way to do it. My personal instinct is always to shoot squared up to the target, both knees down. And I can shoot in this manner more often than not, but when you're under time and pressure and your heart's beating, it, you're gonna be kind of moving up and down. Unless your gun is perfectly balanced and you can get it balanced onto the target. We're shooting at uphill angles, so I can't really balance my gun like this. I guess I could, but in a lot of cases you can't. So bring up that knee, your shooting side knee needs to come up, kneel down, but bring, your, bring this knee up, foot on, flat on the ground, and then use this for your, for your elbow support, for your shooting elbow. And this should be a good stable position. And if you need to, fill it in with a bag to get that dead space if there's dead space there. Gotta wait for the target to stop moving. The stage I just shot was going the distance, 10 rounds, three banks of targets, the one and one and a half at 45 on the double. Two inch and a two and a half at 68 on a double and a five inch on a single at 100 yards. Uh, the restriction here is no part of the BIPOC can touch the ground. They give you five barricades and you're supposed to shoot off of two different ones, near to far, large to small. Pretty straightforward. However, you're gonna pick which one you wanna shoot off of. They give you the cinder block, the five gallon bucket, the chair seat facing this way, the two gallon bucket, 
and then the barrel, the 55 gallon barrel. Depending on what range you're at, you may want to try to shoot cinder block because you can shoot prone off of that thing. Without, you know, you can put your bipod on there or maybe not even shoot a bipod, just shoot a bag. And that gets you a good stable position. Uh, but here, shooting up, up at an incline, I opted to shoot off the chair. It gets me off the ground and I can kind of angle my gun up and then use my knee for a little bit of support and then use the seat for support. And then I just switched to the five gallon, uh, 55 gallon barrel. Uh, and I shot prone because my Arca rail allows me to, to do so. Um, for those shooters who are looking to get NRL 22, Arca rails are a godsend because one, you, it opens your, the door for various bi bipods. And then I can use the full length of my rail for my bipod. And so off this barrel, all I did was just put my bipod really close, use my bag off of the pistol grip to shoot um, a stable prone. It's almost like shooting off a tabletop, basically bench. So that's how I shot this stage. Pretty straightforward. Um, if you don't have that option, various things you could do is shoot, shoot sitting, use your bipod, straddle the, the bucket. Uh, that, the five gallon bucket's a good, good, uh, good uh, prop to just straddle your bipod off of. You can just put the bipod legs over either on top of the feet, or you can, if you have a sky pod, you can just straddle here and you have a good seated position, especially if you're shooting flat ground, because you can just dominate the gun, kind of, kind of lean into it a little bit and uh, break some clean shots. In any case, uh, it's up to the shooters, uh, you know, up to the shooter, individual shooter, what they like to shoot off of. I'll always choose the 55 gallon barrel simply because I can shoot basically what, what, you know, just becomes a bench rest type position. So that's why I like that one. And I opted to shoot chair, but set up some, set up the barricades or props at your house and see what you like to do as far as getting to those positions. Miss that one? Sure, I missed that one, but oh well. Ready, set, shoot is your typical tank trap stage. It's a 12 rounder. We have three targets, a one and a half at 40, two and a half at 60, and a four inch at 90 yards. This is the bonus stage, so you finish with extra time. On the clock, you get a tenth of a bonus point per second. Uh, the restriction here, though, is you cannot dial. You can't dial your, your elevation or your windage. You can only touch your magnification knob and your parallax, which is fine. Um, I think I ran uh, what's negative 0.1 and 0.2 and 1.4 for my, my dope with 1050 feet per second out of center X. Um, basically, you're gonna shoot off all three tank trap tips and then the uh, final three shots will be on the center of the tank trap. Uh, so you can do the, any of the tips in any order you want, but your final three shots must be on the center of the tank trap. Not really much, you know, again, typical tank trap stage, just get a stable position as best you can. Uh, if you noticed during my run, when I ran, the rifle on the forward, left forward trip tip. I was using this right, this rear tip as my support for my arm. 
that worked pretty well. And then I would just lean on this side when I'm there. And then here, it's just pretty much getting a good position, stable position as best you can. I just spread my, my legs out. I don't, I'm just too short. I can't use my right knee or anything. So just try to balance the gun on here. My gun is relatively balanced now. So as long as it doesn't tip left, left or right, um, it balances well. So I got no problems here as far as shooting this gun like this. Cause I can, I don't have to, uh, I don't really lose anything here. I did miss a shot at the very close range at 40 yards. Uh, I think I probably held straight on and I should have held under target a little bit or just a little, or below on target. I don't know. Maybe I jerked it. Not sure why I missed that, <laughs> missed a shot at 40 yards. In any case, just practice the tank trap if you can. Uh, these are easy, pretty easy to build. Just need a few, uh, couple, few, few, few four by fours. Maybe just get a ten. I think you'll need uh, now you'll need more than one ten. So you'll probably need two ten footers, and then just cut them as you want, and make a tank trap. So anyway, let's move on to the last stage. Far target and if I can find it out there. There it is. Uh, up, up, on my bipod. Back up. Small to large. Adjusting parallax here. Last stage I just ran through is back and forth. It's a 10 round prone stage. We got the full K wild rack at 35 and a three inch on a single hanger at hundred yards. No real restrictions here. You're just gonna you know, start standing obviously with the usual, usual cadence. Take a prone support as a position, engage your targets with one shot in the following order. You're gonna do K wild rack from large to small, far target, far target, then K wild rack, small to large. So K wild rack, large, K -wild rack, large to small, then shoot the uh, far target twice at hundred, then come back to the K wild rack and shoot it from small to large. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, plenty of time. I finished at 103 on the clock. I didn't bother to, to adjust elevation. You shouldn't have to. The target's three inch at 100, so it's, it's very large. I held 1.8 like I, I would normally do, maybe 1.7 since the barrel's heating up. Uh, the only thing is most people will have problems with is if they're, for some reason, if they're zero, their windage zero at 50 and under is wrong, they might be missing that KYL rack at 35 yards, like the quarter inch. Um, at our, my range, I tend to hold a little bit left, just maybe a smidge left for that quarter inch target, at the quarter inch KYL, even at 35, but uh, it's just knowing the territory, I guess. That's just kind of gaming it, like as far as my experience is concerned. But this is a pretty easy stage, in my opinion. Uh, but that's pretty much it for the NRL 22 May 2023 course of fire. Uh, let's go ahead and clean up and we'll wind it down. One last quick tip for the newer shooters who've never shot an NRL 22 match with this KYL rack. We have a quarter inch, half inch, three quarter inch, and a one inch KYL. Depending on what kind of KYL rack, KYL rack they're running at your, at your venue and how it's set up, more often than not, you'll hit, like let's say you hit the one inch, sorry, <laughs> it'll go this way rather. Um, often this will end up shaking like this, right? The, the next target you're gonna shoot. So you, now you're looking at this, right? Do not get too focused on trying to shoot as fast as possible. 
let this thing, if it's shaking like this and you got to shoot it, let it, let it, let it settle down first. There's plenty of time, especially if you know this, the, the stage that you're shooting. If you're shooting prone and you're staying in one position, there's no rush, right? You're pretty much in one position. There's no movement. So just take a little bit of time for this target to settle down and then take a shot, right? Then it'll hit. And if this is also moving, the next one, again, do the same thing. Wait for this thing to settle down, this, this half inch, and then to settle, shoot it. And then keep going. Especially in the KY, especially the quarter inch starts sticking. If you shoot this one, if you shoot like the next start, the one target in your KY, the quarter inch KYL is the next one you're shooting and this is moving like this, you definitely do not want to take a shot in the quarter inch KYL, even at 35 yards, until it stops moving. Because you don't, I mean, if it's moving just a little bit, you could miss, so. Take your time on KYLs. I mean, know the stage, and if you're like, for example, this last one we just did, if you're sitting in prone, or, or sitting in, if you're in prone the whole time, and there's no movement, that means you got plenty of time. You're, you're in one position, static, you can wait a little bit for things to settle down. I just scooted over to one of the pistol bags, because I just needed to uh, test this 38 Special Ammo, it's 130 grain full metal jackets for my uh, Smith & Wesson 642, because I need to requal with my guns to renew my CCW. And apparently I was looking in the range that they're doing the qual at doesn't allow lead nosed ammo. I guess my, the ammo that I have that I hand load for the 38 is lead nose. It's some Winchester <clears throat> lead nose. It's got a, it's got a copper jacket, but the nose is lead, exposed lead. So got some of this stuff from Bass Pro locally. Just going to make sure it runs and then we'll be fine. I just need a few hot prints. In any case, uh, the NRL 22 May 2023 course of fire, I feel, is a pretty good introductory course of fire for newer shooters. So if you're a new shooter looking to get an NRL 22, it's the start of the new season. The May course of fire is a good beginner course of fire. I think I only dropped two rounds to do this entire run through. They were both the, the, on, on the respective stages, they were both a close target for some reason. So I missed a, a close target. But it's really simple, and there should be no issues for most people. Uh, experienced shooters should have no problem with this course of fire, and the new shooters will uh, will enjoy this uh, course of fire because it should be relatively low difficulty compared to some of the harder courses of fire we've had in the past. As far as the run-through that I just did, for those of you who've seen my past ones, this one is a little different in the way I did it. I just did a... I live fire shot it and just went over the stage really quickly after that. So I'm gonna try to trim them down. I've had feedback in the past about how my run-throughs are long and I get that. I was listening to the NRL 22 podcast. Uh, if you don't know, NRL 22 has a podcast. And the most recent one was with 22 Lima Romeo and he does a run-through as well. And he started doing them, I guess he saw my videos and was inspired to do his own, which were a little bit more concise. And I, and I totally understand that people want a more concise, short, straight to the point run through of the course of fire. I totally get that. As far as my, my past methods, again, I, I don't come here, I mean, I come to the range to do certain things, but at the same time, my range vlogs are sort of document, like documentaries as far as like what I do at the range. So if it happened to be run, running through a course of fire, that's the stylistic approach. That's what I, I have been doing as far as filming it filming that course of fire run through, sort of like just me at the range, right? And incidentally, I just have to be doing the course of fire and do a run through and trying to explain each stage. In any case, I, I figure let's go ahead and try to trim it down a little bit, make a little bit more uh, just shooting and a little bit of discussion and that's it. If you like that, let me know. If you don't like it, let me know. I'm open to feedback. And I don't know, I've been kind of torn on t in terms of, some of the things I do online in terms of writing I do a lot of articles and I know that it doesn't have as much uh, readership as it could because I'm not like a major news outlet. But at the same time, I know that people regularly read my stuff because they reach out to me years later and say, hey, I saw your article on such and such. Very, it was very cool. I, I got some information out, et cetera. But I've noticed that people, especially in the TikTok era, if you don't do anything in less than 30 seconds, people just lose interest. It's unfortunate. And I feel that a lot of the things that we try to convey we end up losing the details, important details, because people just don't want to stick around and listen to it. I'll admit that I get long-winded at times. Um, people told me that, but the reason why I'm long-winded is because I want to make sure that you are well-informed on a certain subject. 
So I may go on and I may prattle on and on when we start talking about something, if you ask me a question, but I'll try to give you the, the most you know, information up front, but when it comes down to important details, I'm gonna bring that stuff up. So I don't know, that's just kind of the way I am as far as trying to be thorough. In either case, I'm gonna go ahead and finish off firing a few more, few more uh, cylinders of this, and then I'm gonna get out of here. It's getting warm. It's already 11.13. Today is my day off. However, I said I would attend a meeting later this afternoon uh, because I'm gonna be out tomorrow as well, and so they wanted to have a meeting, and I told them, hey, if you can do, if you can do it later in the afternoon, I can attend. So I'm gonna go hur hurry up and finish up, clean up the rest of my gear, pack up, get out of here, make my meeting at 2.30, 14.30, and then uh, tomorrow I got some other stuff to take care of. Anyway, that's it for today. Wednesday, April 26th here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.